Can you learn Premiere Pro in only 15 minutes? Absolutely. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. Because let's be honest, Premiere Pro is super intimidating. There are just so many features, so many options. Where do we even start? Well, in this video, I want to take you step by step through everything so you know how to edit your video and make it look pretty darn epic. So let's put a timer on the screen and let's begin. When we open Premiere Pro, we are greeted with this window and this is where we can continue working on an existing project, but obviously in this case, we're going to be creating a new project. This window already looks complex, but we're going to do three simple things. First, we're going to give our project a name and then second, we're going to choose a location for our project where it should be saved. Now, lastly, we're going to check the renderer. Make sure that you either use CUDA or OpenCL, whichever one of the two you have, just try to avoid software only because that will make Premiere Pro a lot slower. Then hit OK and welcome to Premiere Pro. Now, this is probably the moment where you were like, nah, I, I can do this. I'm just going to close it. Stay with me. Stay with me. Let's first explore the interface. As you can see right here, there's different tabs for different workspaces. There's a bunch of tools that we can use. There's a bunch of windows, but we're going to keep this very simple because we do not need all of that. We're just going to be editing in the default editing workspace and we're only going to use three tools. Yes, just three. We're going to use the razor tool to cut our footage. We're going to use the selection tool. And finally, we're also going to use the text tool to create some really cool text. Now, if your editing workspace looks any different then go up here to the top menu and then click on window workspaces and reset to saved layout and of course if you do want to customize your workspace you can in the same window menu you can also add some other windows you can rearrange them you can delete them but for the sake of this video let's stick to the default editing workspace which is actually the workspace that I still use to this day okay so the second step is to import our files but before we can do that let's create some folders and those folders are called bins in Premiere Pro and if you look down here there's a little folder icon to create those bins I always create a bin for a roll which is basically just my talking headshot like that will be this shot right now then B roll which is either like screen recordings of this video or for example if I'm talking about coffee and I have some coffee clips that I can show while I'm talking about coffee then I also create a bin for audio which is music and sound effects and sometimes voiceover and I create a bin for assets. Then what we want to do is we want to open one of those bins and then double click on the window to import your files. And then a little thing that I always do is I sort by name because it makes it easier for me to find the right files. Now there's three ways that you can view your files. You can use the list view, the tile view, or the freeform, which is basically a storyboard of your clips where you can categorize them like you would with a storyboard. But we're just going to stick to the tile view. If you're somewhat familiar with any video editing program, then you know that we are missing something. We are missing a timeline, which is called a sequence in Premiere Pro. And in order to create a sequence, we're going to right click right here and then click on new item and new sequence. That opens up this window where you can choose any of the timeline presets. If you want, you can also customize it. You can change the frame rate. You can change the aspect ratio. But if you don't know the frame rate or you don't know the resolution of your clip, then just close this window and then right click on the clip and then click on new sequence from clip. And as we can see, the sequence appeared right here, which is where we will be editing our video. If you chose to create a sequence from clip, then this clip will now be on the timeline. And if you want, you can delete it by clicking on it and then hitting delete on your keyboard. But I am just going to keep it here and use it as a narration for this video. Let's take a look at the timeline. The timeline is divided into two sections. There's a video and an audio section. If you want to add more videos or any other type of visuals to your timeline, then you drop them right here on this side. And if you want to add any music or sound effects or voiceovers, then you drop them right here. I always like to zoom in on the timeline by pressing Alt on my keyboard and then scrolling with my mouse. Now you can also use this bar right here and just drag it in and out to either zoom in or zoom out. Then let's make the tracks a little bit bigger so we can see everything properly. And we do this by dragging this line up and this line down, or just simply double clicking on the track. And if you want to make the tracks small again, then you double click on it again. To play through a clip, we hit spacebar on our keyboard, or what you can do is you can hold the playhead, which is this thing right here, and just move it around. 
All right, since this is my A roll, let's now look at the B roll clips. And the best way to go about this is by double clicking on a clip to open it up in the source monitor. If you want the entire clip, then just grab the screen and drop it on the timeline or just grab it directly from the project bin and drop it on the timeline. However, if you just want a selection of the clip on the timeline, we need to create in and out points, which are basically just start and end points of our selection. And in order to do this, we hit I on our keyboard to select our in point. And when we're happy with our selection, we hit O. Now we have created our selection and if you want both the video and the audio of this clip then just grab the screen and drag it to your timeline. But if we look closely we can also see that there is two buttons right here. There's one for video only and one for audio only. Now if we only want the video part which is what I want since this is b-roll and I don't need the audio I'm going to click and hold that button and then drag it to the timeline. And as you can see now only the video part has appeared on the timeline. Now, if you want both the video and the audio, but either one of them doesn't appear on the timeline, then make sure that you have selected the tracks. So for example, I'm going to unselect this track and then I'm going to grab the screen because I want both the video and the audio and I drag it to the timeline, but you can see that I only drag the audio to the timeline. And if I select the video track again, now both the video and the audio will be dropped on the timeline. Now let's do this for all the clips. All right, we've got a nice selection on our timeline, so now it is finally time to edit them. I don't know about you, but I am getting a little bit excited. All right, let's take a look at the clips. Now we've already made selections using the in and out points, but we still want to trim our clips. So in order to do that, we have to cut it and we cut it by clicking on the razor tool right here or hitting C on our keyboard and then click on the clip where you want to cut it. Now, if you want to level up straight away, then position the playhead where you want the cut to be and then hit Ctrl K or Command K on your keyboard. Now, if you want the cursor back again, then hit V on your keyboard or click on the selection tool right here. Since we want to delete this a little bit, let's click on it and then hit delete on our keyboard. But as you can see now, there is a gap between our clips. And in order to get rid of this gap, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and then click on ripple delete. You can also trim the end or beginning of the clip and you don't need the razor tool for that. All you need to do is grab the edge and then move it to the left or the right. Sometimes it happens that we still have our razor tool enabled and we accidentally made a cut. Now to get rid of this cut, just click on that cut and then press delete. And of course, if you want to undo whatever you did, like most programs, you can just use Ctrl Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac. Now that we have all our clips in place and edited, it is time to level up. And when I say level up, I am talking about effects. But before we talk about effects, if you're enjoying this video so far, please make sure to hit subscribe so I know that you like this video and we can continue learning together. If we click on a clip and then look at the effect controls panel right here, we can already find some basic effects such as position, scale, opacity, rotation. So if you want to reposition your video or you want to zoom in, this is where you do it. And if you want to create a zoom in effect or a transition, then definitely make sure to check out my video where I talk all about that and I explain how to do exactly that. If we want to add an effect that isn't here by default, we need to open up the effects tab right here. And if you don't see it right here, then let's go to the top menu and click on window and then check effects. When we open up the effects panel, we can see that there are different folders. There's one for video transitions, for example, or video effects or audio effects. So if you want an effect, then just simply open a folder and search for the effect. Or even better, if you already know the name of the effect, for example, if we want a blur or a crop effect, then what we want to do is we want to type it in here. And then when we find it, you want to click on it and then hold it and drop it on the clip. Now let's go back to the effects control panel. And as you can see, the effect is added to the effects controls panel. And this is where you can change the values. This is where you can animate effects. So if you want to animate an effect, we need to create keyframes. And in order to create keyframes, we need to make sure that the stopwatch is enabled. So make sure that it's blue. And if you don't know what keyframes are, keyframes are basically checkpoints that we use to direct Premiere Pro from one point to the other. So now that we have created our starting point by enabling the stopwatch, we're going to scrub through the video and then change the values. And this is, in a nutshell, how you animate an effect. Now, if you want to get rid of an effect, then simply click on the effects name right here and then hit delete. You can add as many effects as you want, both for video effects and audio effects, and you will find all the effects right here in the effect controls panel. The same goes for video transitions. So if you want to add a video transition, then go to the folder video transitions and then look for the right transition. Or again, if you already know the name, you can type it in and Premiere Pro will search it for you. 
So let's take this cross dissolve as an example. What we're going to do is we're going to click and hold it and then drop it where the two clips meet. And if that doesn't work, then what you want to do is you want to double click on the transition and then go right here and change it to center. There is one effect that you will not find in the effects panel, and that is the speed effect. If you want to speed up or slow down your clip, what you need to do is hit Ctrl R or Command R if you're on a Mac, and that will bring up this dialog box. Now here you can change the percentage, so if you want to slow it down, the percentage needs to be lower than 100%, and if you want to speed it up, it needs to be above 100%. Now before we move on to text and color grading, let's add some music. And trust me when I say that music is so, so important. It helps you tell the story, it helps you set the mood, it is everything. And most importantly, regardless of whether you're doing client work or whether you have a YouTube channel, you want to make sure that you do not use any copyrighted music because that can kill your channel. Now I've been avoiding getting any copyright strikes on my channel since the start by getting all of my music and sound effects from a company called Epidemic Sound. They have been my go-to library for the last one and a half years. Like literally everything you hear in every video is from them because it's quick, it's easy, it's super affordable. They add new tracks every week and chances are that your favorite YouTubers are using Epidemic Sound as well. And not entirely unimportant, they're also sponsoring this video. Thanks guys. Like I said I've been a huge fan of their service for the last one and a half years so what I always do is I go to their website and then immediately boom there are recommendations based on my YouTube channel and based on my recent downloads but if you just signed up for a 30-day free trial then another great starting point is by filtering on genre mood or album so for example if you're editing a vlog let's go to albums and filter by vlog and let's assume that you're editing a very summary type of video then let's click on this album. Now, if you like a song, but you're like, oh, this is just not it. It's so close, but it's not it. You can actually find similar tracks by clicking on the two rings right here or click here on find similar. Or if you like the song, but you want the instrumental version or you want to take out the drums, for example, then you can download the separate tracks, which are called stems. And if you're really ambitious, you can even compose your own song. Seriously, just go check it out because if you use the link in my description, you get a 30 day free trial on either a personal plan, which is great for social media and YouTube, or a commercial plan, which is great if you wanna do any freelance work. There's no strings attached, 30 days for free if you use the link in my description. When it comes to adding music, the exact same principles apply. We're going to double click on the music track and then we're going to set our in and out points and drag it to the timeline. Now, if we want to lower our music, which in this case we do, we want to go back to the effect controls tab. So first click on the music track and then go to the effect controls tab and then make sure that this time you untoggle the stopwatch because it's on by default and we don't want any keyframes this time and then just lower the volume. All right, our video looks and sounds pretty fancy, but we're not done yet because we want to add some text. Simply hit T on your keyboard to enable the text tool or click on the T in the menu bar right here and then click anywhere on the screen to create a text layer. Now, as you can see, a text layer has also appeared on our timeline. So now you can type whatever you want. I'm going to type subscribe so you won't forget to subscribe. And then let's go to the effect controls panel again to select our font and basically just stylize our text. Now we can add effects to our text the same way that we would to our video. Last but certainly not least, color grading. Now this is the best part of editing, in my opinion. In order to color correct and color grade our video, we need to open up the Lumetri panel. So let's do that by going to window and then checking Lumetri. As you can see, there are several tips right here in the Lumetri menu, but the most important one for color correction is obviously the basic correction tab. Here is where we can adjust the temperature and the exposure of the video. And we do this by just using any of these sliders. Now, I do want to say that this is not a scientific approach to color correcting. I've actually made a color correction for beginners video that I would really recommend you to check out after this video. But for now, I think this is good enough. It's good enough to just play around and get used to it. And if you'd like to add a LUT, which is basically a video filter, then we want to go to the creative tab. And then in the look section, you can either import a LUT or use any of these built-in LUTs. Now, if at this point you're like, Pretty cool, I like it. I wanna export my video, please show me how. Well, what we do is we first make sure that we click on the sequence because otherwise we cannot export our video. With the sequence window selected, we go to file and then click on export. 
What I recommend when it comes to export settings is using one of the built-in presets like the YouTube 4K or 1080p preset right here. Then change the output name right here and choose a location for your video. Okay, let's hit export and congratulations, you have just made your first video in Premiere Pro. Now make sure to watch this beginner's guide playlist that I made especially for you and I'll see you I'll see you there or I'll see you in the next one if you subscribe.